Hi, Israelite Prepper here. And I just wanted to cover a, a subject I've been looking at a lot on, on Facebook and, um, and YouTube. And a lot of people are starting to ask questions. Many people have a, a background, a Christian background, and they come from church. And it may be Baptist, it may be Methodist, it may be Pentecostal, it may even be Catholic. And they're starting to come into the way, or what we call uh, the knowledge of the truth. And this one question seems to plague them. They say, well, what's the difference between being an Israelite and a Christian? Now, I can tell you right at the outset that this could be a list of 20, 30 things. But I won't bore you with all that. I'll just give you a few things. A few of them are critical. But we have to have a proper understanding between the two. Okay? Being an Israelite, first and foremost, is a bloodline. Okay, so if you are gifted to be part of the bloodline that your forefathers may be Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and a good indicator is um, the people whom the curses in history have said has uh, fallen on them. I'm sorry, let me say that again. Well, the curses have fallen on them. Those that are contained in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28 in particular, as well as some other places in the Bible, like, you know, being hidden in prison housing and slavery and, you know, your children being sold from bond women and bond men and you will plant vineyards and you won't uh, uh, enjoy them and you'll build houses and you won't live in them and things like that. And then when you go into history, it will show, it, it will show uh, particular people whom these curses have fell on, fell upon. So, first and foremost, being an Israelite is a bloodline. If you're gifted enough to have that blood. Second, it is for the grafted, those who are grafted in, who believes in the Israelite way. Those who follow the law, statutes, and commandment with the faith of the Messiah. Those who join themselves in there, the alien, the stranger, the Gentile, those who join themselves to the Israelite way, the biblical way, uh, to put uh, properly, those are grafted. So you either have the gifted or the grafted, but both the same. They follow the Bible, the whole Bible, the whole Bible. Now, on the other hand, you have Christianity, which is a religion. And it's a religion full of traditions, traditions of men, traditions that go as far as back as the Roman Catholic Church. Now, I know a lot of people may say, well, you know, I'm a Christian and they were first called Christians in Antioch. And I understand that. And I really wish it was that simple. I wish we can simply say, hey, I'm a Christian and people will know exactly what that means. Now, when you say a Christian, being an Israelite doesn't really come to mind. Consider, if I say I'm a Christian, then which denomination am I? If I'm a Christian, am I a Roman Catholic Christian? Am I, uh, or the Protestant persuasion? Am I Lutheran, Methodist, Seventh-day Adventist? Am I a Mormon? What am I? So because that, 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 that title, that tag, you know, Christian has a lot of denominations attached to it. Over 30,000 the last time I, I checked. So one of the basic differences is you can be a Christian and you have the you follow the traditions of Christianity. And then you need to pick a denomination. Even being non-denominational is a denomination in and of itself. So that's one of the basic differences there. Another difference is law, faith, and grace. For an Israelite, an Israelite, they believe in the law. They also believe in faith in the Messiah. And they also believe in the grace of God. These three things are different and distinct. And we need all three for salvation. If you're an Israelite, most Israelites believe that. Christianity, on the other hand, you throw away the law, just have faith and you get grace. And to justify that is usually a bunch of misinterpretation of some of the writings of Paul. And it's perpetuated by Christian pastors and preachers. So one of the differences, again, I'll reiterate, 
law, faith, grace. To the Israelite, you need all three. To the Christian, hey, you know what? You may not even need that much faith because, again, once saved, always saved. Um, even if you don't have faith, you don't need the law because we're no longer under the law. And you, faith, mm, okay, that's fine. But you can get grace. It's only by the grace of God. There's nothing else you can do. And they, they, they rehash that and they reiterate that. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. Those sort of things. And since faith doesn't take a lot and faith is not, being, uh, is not an actual action word, they'll say, okay, yeah, you got to have faith. You just got to believe. That sort of thing. But some people do away with that, too. Some Christians do away with that and just, hey, it's just all about his grace. It's all about his grace because he loves us so much. So, the three main tenets, the three main components in the Bible, the Israelite believes in all three and that you need all three. And, of course, grace is a gift freely given from God. So there's nothing you can do to manufacture that. But you still need all three for salvation. If he doesn't give you the grace, we won't be saved. Another difference is the Bible. Now, a lot of churches today are catching wind of this whole Hebrew roots movement and starting to go into the Bible a little bit more. But by and large, most of the teachings are relegated to the Renewed Covenant or the New Testament. And the Old Testament is reduced to just stories. It is just stories in their eyes. But it, it's not relevant today. It's just simply stories. Stories that we can learn a little moral lesson or something uh, to. They relegate it to a cautionary tale. That's for the Christian. Now, for the Israelite, it is history and prophecy. And it's the whole Bible. We, the, the Israelite believes that the New Testament simply testifies of the Old Testament. And it's and the, the Old Testament is simply renewed in the New Testament. But the whole Bible is history and prophecy. And it contains the whole plan of God. So that's the difference between an Israelite and a Christian. And last but certainly not least, are the Israelites believe in the Lord's holy days, which is outlined in Leviticus. The Lord's holy days. Whereas Christianity still to this day celebrates man-made holidays. I know there's some exceptions out there, but as a whole, Christianity celebrates holidays. Man-made holidays. Easter, Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving, things like that. Now, sometimes they repackage it and do the same thing. They say, oh, this is fall festival and things like that. But we know exactly what it is. We're not fooling ourselves. Well, in fact, if you're fooling anyone, you're only fooling yourself. But again, Israelites practice holy days to the best of their ability. They practice holy day, Passover, unleavened bread, Pentecost, Day of Atonement, Feast of Tabernacles, Eight Day, Feast of Trumpets. Those holy days that are set out in the Old Testament and still practiced in the New Testament. Now, a lot of people say, well, that's for the Jews. That was for the Israelites back in that day. But then when we take a closer look at what it is said in Leviticus 23, it says, these are my feasts, said the Lord. So these are not the feast of the Jews or feast of Moses. These are the Lord's feast. Now, I'll have another bonus difference, difference there. The dietary law, which is outlined in Leviticus 11. Israelites, to the best of their ability, keep the Lord's dietary law. Now, the Christian, all you got to do is pray over it. All you have to do is pray over your food. Everything's been made clean. Then they justify it with, let no man judge you in meats. We can get a deeper study into that because it wasn't talking about the dietary law. Or they will use Peter's vision, which was talking about letting the Gentiles in for salvation. But we can go on and on from there. But the Israelite believe in God's dietary law. Whereas the Christian, pray over it. We can eat anything we want. So, that is why if you hear and you look on Facebook or you look on YouTube, that is why you hear Israelites denounce this idea of Christianity. 
because it is completely man-made tradition and completely ignores what the Bible says. I hope this has been helpful. And if you have some other differing, uh, some, some, some other things that differentiate uh, Israelite, both gifted and grafted, and a Christian, I would love to hear your differences on there. Just comment below. Until next time, this is Israelite Prepper. Shalom.